Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to Week 11. In the next couple of lessons, we're going to be looking at work, energy, and power. In this lesson, we're going to specifically be looking at work. So what is work? Work is done when a force acts on an object and the object moves in the direction of the force. So we have to have a force. It has to act on the object and the object has to move in the direction of the force. Okay, please remember that. So the formal definition of work is work done on an object by a constant force is defined as F delta X cos theta, where F is the magnitude of the force, delta X is the magnitude of the displacement, and theta is the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay, so we've got F delta X cos theta equals work done where F is how much we're pushing it, delta X is how far it is moving, and cos theta is obviously working out the angle that we're pulling it or pushing it at, okay, because that makes a difference as well. So please understand this, and you need to know the definition very well, okay, that work done on an object by a constant force is defined as F delta X cos theta, and you need to know that F is the magnitude of the force, delta X the magnitude of the displacement, and theta the angle between the force and the displacement. Please make sure you learn it. What's important is that work is a scalar quantity. So what does that mean? It means that you cannot have a negative value. You cannot have a negative value. Okay, you cannot do negative amounts of work. And why is that? That's because work is a transfer of energy and energy cannot be negative. The, finally, the unit for work is the joule okay or the newton meter and where do they get that newton meter from well if you remember we know that work is equal to f delta x cos theta cos theta doesn't have a unit but f is measured in newtons and delta x is measured in meters so the work done is newton meters or better still we know it as joules so when is no work done? We just said that the definition of work was when a constant force was applied and the object was moved a distance and it was in the same direction as the force was applied. So therefore, if a force is applied to an object but the object does not move, then no work is done on that object as you can see over here this person is pushing this huge rock the rock is not moving so even though this person is straining away they are pushing really really hard but even though they're pushing really really hard there is no work done on the object because the object is not moving also when an object moves at a constant velocity across a frictionless surface then there is no resultant force then there is no work done on the object. Okay, so let's think about what we said. We said work is equal to F delta X cos theta. But what you need to understand is this is actually F net or F resultant. And if there is no resultant force, then, they can, then that number there is zero. Okay, let me just change that. Then that number is zero, and zero times anything is zero, so therefore the work done is zero. So if there's no resultant force and the object is moving at a constant velocity, then no work is done. And those are two cases when no work is done, and those two are very important. Let's look at this example. Yeah, we have little waiter, let's call him Harry, and Harry is carrying a tray. So now, if you think about it, Harry lifts up the tray, and when he lifts up the tray, he's working against the force of gravity, okay? But once he's lifted it up and he's walking this way, he is carrying that tray in this direction, but he's holding it up. So do you see that the force that he's applying and the direction he's moving are at right angles to each other? And therefore, even though 
Harry's arm might get a bit small if he doesn't have very big, a bit sore if he doesn't have very big muscles. After carrying this tray for a long time, okay, he is doing no work. He is doing no work as far as science is concerned. So the weight is doing work against the force of gravity, but only as he picks up the tray and he puts it down. He is doing no horizontal work on the tray as the force he is applying is perpendicular to the direction of the movement. So as the waiter walks along okay, with the tray on his arm, as he walks along, he is doing no work because the force that he is acting is upwards but the direction he is moving is horizontal and they have to be in the same direction in order for work to be done. Okay, and that's very important. So let's do an example. It says determine the work the boy does in pulling the child. Okay, so you can see that the boy over here is pulling at an angle of 30 degrees and he's pulling a distance of 30 meters. And you can see the child is actually traveling in this direction. So if we had to do this nice and slowly, if we had to say, okay, fine, by definition, we know that work equals F delta X, the net force delta X. I know that the definition has got a cos theta and I want to show you where it comes from. So if we look at this diagram, we can see that the guy, the little boy is pulling at 50, 50 newtons, okay? But this 50 newtons is 30 degrees to the horizontal. And the horizontal is the direction that the little child is being pulled. So in order to get the net force that is actually pulling the child horizontally, we'd need to work out the horizontal component. So if we did Sokotoa, Sokotoa, and we apply the socket cos, we apply Sokotoa to this triangle, we're gonna have to use cos. We want the horizontal component, okay? So cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is the force that we actually want, okay? And the hypotenuse is the force that the boy is actually pulling. So therefore, we can say that hypotenuse cos theta equals the side we want, the actual adjacent side. So what would that would be? That would be 50 cos theta. So that's where this definition of F net cos delta X cos theta comes from. It's actually saying the work is defined as the net force times the displacement as long as the displacement is in the same direction as the net force. In this case, the net force is F cos theta times by delta X. Okay, but we know that F in this case is 50 cos theta is going to be cos of 30 degrees and the delta, the displacement is 30 meters. So it's times by 30 meters altogether. So then we whip out our calculator and we go cos of 30, which is going to be 0.87. So we go 50 times 0.87 times our 30 meters. So we multiply it by 1500. And we get that the force, I mean the work done, the work done is 1299.04 joules. The work done is 1299.04 joules. And remember grade 12, you always run around off to two decimal places and you actually want to round off right at the end. So this, I would have just put all of this into my calculator. And you could have actually done it in the order that now that you understand where this cos theta is, you can just put it in this order. So in other words, if you were presented with this question in the exams, you would just go, well, we know that work done is equal to F net delta X cos theta. And you go, well, he's pulling with a force of 50 for a distance of 30 meters and it is an angle of 30 degrees. And you substitute that in and you get one, whoopsie, 299.04 joules and that's all you would have to do so in this question which is very basic you don't have to think at all now that you understand where this cos theta is coming from right 
Let's do the next example. It says a 25 kilogram crate of chocolate is sitting on a loading dock. It needs to be pulled 10 meters to the store. The coefficient of the kinetic friction between the box and the side work is 0.22. What is the network done on the crate is a man pulls a box with a force of 100 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so let's list what we've got. We've got that the mass is 25 kgs. We have the mu k is 0, 0,22. We know that delta x is 10 meters, 10 meters. We know that the force applied over here, this force applied is 100 meters, but is 100 newtons, but it's at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so now we need to think about what we want to do, and we need to realize that the definition of work done, work done is actually F net times delta x. I know that they put cos theta in, but let's just not worry about that for a second, okay? So what is the net force in this case? The net force, F net, is equal to the force applied plus the force of friction. Okay, because remember that the net force, the resultant force, is always the sum of all the forces. It doesn't matter that one's in the back going backwards or not. We'll worry about that when we apply minuses and pluses. The definition of the net force is that it's the sum of all the forces. Okay, so now we need to, since these are vectors, give directions. So if we are moving the box in this direction, we're going to choose that as positive. Then this force of friction has to be negative, right? So therefore, we know that this is going to be force applied plus minus the force of friction. Okay, so now we can say, well, let's look at this force applied. The force applied is 100 newtons, but it is at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So like the previous example, we need to work out this horizontal component. So we are going to again use our trigonometry and we're going to use Sakatoa. Sakatoa. Okay. And we're going to say, well, we've got the adjacent side and we've got the hypotenuse. We want the adjacent side, we've got the hypotenuse. Again, we're going to use cos, just like in the previous example. So in other words, the force applied is actually F, oh no, that color is horrible. F cos theta, just like in the previous example, okay? Plus, plus times or minus is a minus the force of friction. But now let's talk about the force of friction. You know by definition that the force of friction is equal to mu k Fn, where mu k is the coefficient of kinetic friction in this case, that's 0, 0,22, and Fn is the normal force, and the normal force is always equal to the force of gravity if it is on a horizontal surface, so therefore this is just going to be mass times by gravity, so that's going to be 0, 0,22 times by 25 times by 9,8. So I'm going to substitute that in here. So therefore, we're going to have, let's substitute in all the numbers. We've got the force applied, which is 100. Cos theta, which is in this case is cos 30 degrees. Minus the force of friction, and I'm going to put it in big brackets, is 0, 0,22 times by 25 times by 9,8. And we're going to close the brackets. Now, guys, feel free to work these out separately. You do not need to put this all in one big sum. I've just done it to make it a little bit easier because I run out of space otherwise. But if you guys want to work out this first, okay, and then you want to work out the force of friction and then put them in the sum, that sum there, that is fine too. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're getting it right. Okay, so therefore we've got this is 86. Let's just work it out. It's 100 cos 30, 
which is equal to 86 comma 60 so I'm not gonna worry about the zero minus and then it's 0 0.22 times 25 times 9.8 which is going to be 53 comma 9 and if we put that in our calculator again we get 86.6 .6 minus 53.9 is going to give us 32,7 newtons. Now you have to be really careful, grade 12, because you could easy, easy, easy make the mistake of just going, well, I finished the sum, but you're not, because they did not ask you for the net force, they asked you for the net work done. So always go make sure that what you've answered is actually what they've asked, okay? So now we need to do the last bit, and we know that the work done, the net work done, W net, is equal to F net delta X. So the net force is 32 comma 7 times by the displacement, which we know is 10 meters. So that works out to be 327 joules. 327 joules. Now this is one way to do it. The other way is to work out the work done by the applied force and the work done by the friction and subtract the two, or add them, which is subtracting. And I'll show you how to do that again. Also, we'll do this question again, but on the next slide, I'll show you how to do it that way. And then you guys can choose which way suits you better. Okay, so make sure you go through this properly. Now we're going to look at exactly the same question, but this time we're going to do it in a slightly different way because there are two different ways to do this question. I want to give you the opportunity to see both ways so then you guys can decide which way works best for you. Okay, so last time we said, okay, fine, that the work done was equal to F net delta X. So what we did was we worked out the net force first, we worked out the net force, and then we applied it to this. But another way to do it is to think, okay, well, the network is equal to the sum of all the work done on the object, all the work done. So what we could do is we could say the work done by the applied force plus the work done by the friction is equal to the network. Either way is the correct way to do it. You can either do it this way or you can do it this way. It doesn't matter. And I'm showing this way so that you know that you can do it both ways. So what does that mean? That means we need to look at these things separately. So let's look at the work done by the applied force. And the nice thing about this is then we can just use our basic equation. So we know that work done by the applied force is equal to F delta X cos theta. Okay, so the force applied is 100 newtons. It's a displacement of 10 meters, 10, at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, at an angle of cos of 30 degrees. So we pop that in our calculator and we go 100 times 10 times cos of 30, close brackets, equals, and that works out to be 866.03 joules. Okay, so that is the work done by the applied force. So that's the work done by that force there. Let me put that in another color so you can see it. That, that is the work done by that applied force, pulling this horizontally for 10 meters. But unfortunately, it is pulling against a force of friction. Okay, so now we need to work out the work done by the force of friction. So let's do that. So the work done by the force of friction is going to be F delta X cos theta. But this F is the force of friction. And what you need to remember is that is equal to mu K F N then delta X cos theta. Okay, so mu k we know is 0,22, 0,22. The normal force is the same as mass times gravity because this is on a horizontal surface. So the mass here is 25, the gravity is 9,8, the acceleration due to gravity, shall I say. The displacement is still 10 meters. But now this one you need to be think about, the cos theta, now, if we choose the forward direction as positive, 
then that is naught degrees. So if we go around, then this is going to be 180 degrees. So then this becomes cos of 180 degrees, which is, if you pop it in your calculator, the same as minus 1. So what you get is 0.22 times 25 times 9.8 times cos of 180, close bracket, and you get minus 53 comma 9 joules. And then you just have to do the sum, because remember we said the net work done is the sum of the two works by the different forces, the work done by the different forces. The W at net is equal to 866 comma 0, 03 joules plus minus 53 comma 9 joules which becomes 812 comma 13 joules. Let me just check that. 866.03 minus 53.9 is 812.13 joules. Okay, and that answer will be slightly different to the previous one because of rounding errors, but the system is the same. It's got the same method, the same methodology behind it, okay? And you guys can choose either way to do it. It really doesn't matter. Whatever makes it easiest for you. Right, let's carry on. So now let's talk a little bit more about the network. What's important to realize is, remember I said to you that energy cannot be negative. And because energy cannot be negative, and work cannot be negative either. So it's basically a scalar. Remember I told you this. And what's important therefore is that positive network done on the system will therefore increase the energy of the system. In other words, if we see a positive W, it means that we are increasing the energy of the system. This means that the resultant force is in the direction of the motion and the acceleration of the object will increase. What do I mean by that? Let's think about this. W net is equal to F net delta x cos theta. Okay, let's not worry about the cos theta, that just gives an angle. Let's pretend that it's a horizontal so we can ignore that. Okay, so what we're saying is that if we have a positive network, if this is positive, it means your acceleration is positive. Okay, which means that the resultant force is obviously going in the same direction as the displacement because a plus times a plus makes a plus. So therefore you've got negative, a positive network done if the resultant force is in the same direction as the displacement because then you have plus times plus. And if the net force is positive, remember that F net equals mass times acceleration. So if this is positive, it means your acceleration has to be positive as well. So it means acceleration is going to increase. So even though this is a scalar, okay, this is a scalar, it's telling us stuff. If it is positive, it means the net force is in the same direction as displacement and means that acceleration of the object is increasing. Okay negative network done has got nothing to do with direction. Remember that this is a scalar. So what it means though is it will decrease the energy of the system. It is taking energy out. It is moving energy out of the system into the environs. But what it does mean is that the resultant force is now in the opposite direction of the motion and the object will slow down. So let's look at that again. We know that W net equals F net delta X, right? So if this is negative and we know we chose the direction to be positive, then this has to be a minus because in order to get a minus here, in order to get a minus on the left hand side, then the right hand side has to be minus times by a plus. And since we chose this direction as positive, the net force has to be negative. But we know that F net equals mass times acceleration. So if the net force is negative, mass cannot be negative because it's a scalar, therefore the acceleration is negative as well. So a negative network done 
means that there is a resultant force in the opposite direction, which means the object is slowing down. Right, grade 12, that's all for this lesson. So please go practice, practice, practice. Make sure you understand and can do different questions with regarding to work and network done on an object. And then go do the assessments in the Turnable system. Have a great day.